So, dear Dharma friends, be comfortable yourself and we are going to start our session now. And keep your back straight and neck head straight in one line. And gently close your eyes and focus your mind to this bell sound. So, while you are focusing to the sound, mentally relax your body, relax your mind and relax your breathing. Let everything to settle down as it is. Namo tas bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhas Namo tas bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhas Namo tas bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhas Homage to the blessed one, the exalted one, the fully enlightened one. So dear Dhamma practitioners, keep your back straight and neck head straight in one line and your right palm on your left. And bring your attention to your body and scan head to toes three times. Say Suvapatveva. Oh, may I be well and happy. Take a moment and think. We gathered here in this moment to practice this ancient meditation technique. All the Buddhas, all the enlightened masters, followed this path and achieved a wisdom. So we also gathered here to accumulate that knowledge. In this moment, with this sitting, may my body become more comfortable, may my breath be more smooth, may no difficulties come to me, may all the success come to me. Also think for a moment, this is the last moment we are spending in this very lifetime and detach your mind from all your past memories and as well as any kind of future thoughts. Just try to remain in the present moment observing the sensation of your inhalation, exhalation and later five aggregates, form, feeling, sensation, formations and the recognition. So, in the beginning, mentally relax your body. Relax your head. Relax your forehead. Relax your eyebrows and eyes. Relax your ears. Relax your nose. Relax your upper lip. Relax your lower lip. Relax your chin. Relax your whole face muscles. Relax your teeth. Relax your tongue. Relax your mouth. Relax your throat. 
Relax your shoulders. Relax your arms, elbow, forearms, palms, fingers, fingertips. Relax your whole back muscles and relax your spine. Relax your chest and relax your abdominal muscles. Relax your lungs. Relax your heart. Relax your liver. Relax your kidneys. Relax your gold bladder. Relax your pancreas. Relax your small intestine. And relax your large intestine. Relax your whole abdominal organs. Relax your bottle. Relax your thigh. Relax your knee. Relax your calf muscles. Relax your foot and relax your toes. Relax your whole body muscles, tendons, ligaments, bone, bone marrows and whole skeleton. Release the tension in your mind and keep relax your face muscles. Bring your attention to your body. And observe the lower part of your body. And see if there are any sensation, feelings, heaviness, tightness. Without interfering to that feelings, just recognize and you know, get a mental note. If it is possible, keep an unmovable posture. That will help to observe the recognize the sensation or the pain. Once you recognize the pain, observe it and look into it. Wait and see what is happening itself.
bring my attention to lower back area. Let's see if there are any strong sensation or feeling, heaviness, tightness. Just recognize one place and stay there. And your upper back. Now bring attention to your whole body and feel your whole body as one. And observe head to toes and see if there are any strong sensation or feelings that you can see. If you see many places, just get into one place without interfering to that, start to observe, wait there. If it is disappear, you can get into another place. Otherwise, just hold it to that place. So bring attention to your whole body and see how your whole body naturally inhale and exhale. Slowly bring your attention to the in front of your nose and your upper lip area, just settle down there. See if you can catch the sensation. So don't try to inhale or exhale. Don't try to maintain. Just allow it to happen naturally. Very organic way. And when it happens, just recognize this is inhalation, this is exhalation. Only by sensation.
if your mind go here and there don't go with it just keep focus to the sensation of the inhalation exhalation Follow the entire continuation of the inhalation exhalation. Knowingly, this is the beginning, this is the middle, and this is the end. Also, sometimes you may experience some inhalation exhalation become longer, shorter, heavy, soft, warm, cold. Just accept it. Bring your attention to the impermanent unsatisfactory nature and selflessness within your form, feeling, sensation, formations, recognitions.
bring my attention to your body observe your posture we cultivate loving kindness and compassion in our heart and radiate it as a light through entire your compound village city state country world around this universe also as far as you can through galaxies other planets stars reminding yourself like this so with clear intention mentally repeat after me may all living beings in this universe be well and happy may everyone be happy and safe and may their hearts be filled with joy may all living beings live in security and in peace being so prayed low strong tall or short big or small visible or not visible near or far away already born or yet to be born may all of them dwell in perfect tranquility let no one do harm to anyone let no one put the life of anyone in danger let no one out of anger or ill will wish anyone any harm expand the loving kindness and compassion beginning from your heart and visualize and send it as a light forward so little by little try to expand the capacity to your back side to your left side to your right side downward and upward to all six directions at once like the moon the sun spread the light spread the energy without any condition without any limitation without any resistance or 
without any judgment. Let your heart to shine with the loving kindness and compassion from the bottom of it with the maximum effort to the highest. Wishing yourself may all living beings in this universe be well and happy. Say sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. So dear Dhamma practitioners, as ordinary people, why we have to practice meditation? What is the benefit we gain out of this practice? So when it comes to Buddha's teaching, the main purpose of the Buddha's teaching is self-realization. So the self-realization means recognizing who you are and what is happening within this body. So once you understand that, it will help you to understand others. When you are able to recognize who you are and you are able to recognize other people, as who they are. That is become one of the highest form of our human intellect. So in day to day life, mostly we compare situations and we go through that assumption, assuming things. And also we follow as a habit and we not allow our mind to work independently. So that is one of the, the failure when it comes to our human existence. That is why we bound to the sansara existence. We not allow our true nature to experience the life. What does that mean? So as example, when it comes to our these five organs or six organs, eye, ear, nose, tongue, body, and the mind. So when you see something, can you see it independently without depending from your past experience? So when you see something, normally what we do, we start to think about it. But when you see something, why you have to think about it? Allow your seeing, your vision to be clear. Because there is a wisdom. When you see something, there is a wisdom you can gain out of that scene, not by thinking about what you see. So when you, when you think about what you see, you prioritize than seeing, you prioritize your thinking. So the thinking depends on your past experience or imagination. So with your ear also the same, with the nose also the same, tongue, body and mind also the same. So the meditation means it's a the, the cultivating, cultivate your mind to directly access, that's mean direct perception, to experience the direct perception. 
So in that very moment, there is no interference of thinking. That is where you cultivate your mind. So when it comes to meditation in Buddha's teaching, there are two kinds of meditation techniques. One is Samatha, one is Vipassana. For Samatha, we given many kind of definitions or the meanings or inter interpretations according to different, different teachers or the, the different, different schools or the traditions. As you know, one is tranquility meditation. Another one called mental culture, tranquility mental culture, samatha mental culture. Another one called the chitta bhavana. And another one is one-pointness one meditation. So, and there is another meaning. When it comes to samatha meditation, that is, uh, it's a kind of like a purification of your mind. It purify your mind. So then what is the Samatha does? So the Samatha meditation means you bring your mind to one mental object and stay there focusing to it. And once, so once you focus to one mental object and settle down with your mind with one thing, one thought or one object or one point. And once the mind able to little by little, little by little settle down to it, it help you to purify your mind. What does that mean? So when you settle down in one place, how the mind purify? So, and what is the meaning of purifying mind, purification of the mind? So purification of the mind means, so the purified mind means you get out of greed, hatred and the delusion. So be very clear with the path that we, we go through. So purify your mind means you get out of the greed, hatred and the delusion. So when the when in some of the meditation you come to one pointness, you stay in one point. It can be your breathing, it can be your your bodily bodily sensation or anything, even outside object. So even the natural object, like water, earth, or the blue sky, so that kind of things also. So how the mind get out of greed, hatred and the delusion when you are in one point. So being in the one point means mean you are in the present moment. So in when you are in the present moment, that's mean your mind purify. So then what is that mean? Your mind get dirt when the mind depending from past or the future. Remember that. It doesn't matter who you are. If you are a human being, how your mind get into unpurified mind. So what is the unpurified mind means? The depending from the greed, the hatred and the delusion. So then the purification of mind being you get out of the greed, hatred and the delusion. And uh, so then how the greed, hatred and the delusion develop, ignite and grow inside us when the mind go to past or the future. So when you are in the present moment, your mind become clear. So then in day-to-day -day life, it is your responsibility to keep purified your mind. So if you go to past or the future, be aware not to get dirt yourself, not to unclean yourself, not to have the greed, hatred and the delusion. 
So 24 hours, we cannot do this. Mostly in day-to-day -day life, in the beginning. So that's why in the beginning, we start like this way. Even for a moment, even one second, you, you start with the, even without one second, you, you get the idea and you stay in that idea without practicing. That is enough for some people. At least you know there is a way like this. Maybe today you're not going to do it. Today you having fun and doing something, you know, there are a lot of things you have to enjoy in life. And sometimes there are things people need to go through. It is not what we teach. That's it. Sometimes people are not going to understand. Everybody have sometimes their own personal journey. So just go. But at the same time, now you know yourself. In case if you want to purify your mind, you know how it get dirt. It get dirt because you, you go to past or the future. Even some sometimes we say, other people uh, can make us angry. So when somebody says something, what is happening, suddenly our mind go to past or the future. That's why out of what we hear and uh, we, we think we get mad out of that whatever we hear or whatever we see, especially not because of that, it, it, it's help. But at the same time, the main reason, deeply, very quickly, our mind is start to go to past and the future. But if you stay in the moment, moment by moment, moment by moment, and it's not going to happen that way. But it, it takes time. But somehow, now you know. So once the mind purify, what will happen? When your mind get out of the greed, hatred, and the delusion, so the mind become clear. So when the, when the mind become crystal clear, your body and your mind and your breathing start to become so soft. So then this heaviness disappear. And the once the heaviness disappear, your mind, body and the breathing start to work as one. So once you start to work that your body, breathing, mind start to work as one, you feel so comfortable. And deeply you feel the joy and the satisfaction. So that satisfaction, that joy is completely different than we find the satisfaction and the comfort through this sensual pleasure. It is totally different. And it is so strong than that. This made this through the, of course, there is a sensation, there is a feeling, there is a joy out of these sensual pleasures. We cannot, we cannot deny it. There is something, but this deeply that when you gain the, the through this purification, when the mind, body, and the breathing once become more comfortable and relaxed within itself, that pleasure is so strong and different. And once you have it, what will happen? Once it have it, you now your that deeper satisfaction and the feelings and the sensation are stronger than your sensual pleasures. So then. Now you experience something higher. Once you experience something higher, what will happen? You will never go back to the lower position. So that means you're not going to depend on sensual pleasures. So that is where you get out of the first hindrance, karma chanda. So with the self-centered desire, looking for satisfaction from your eye, ear, nose, tongue, body, and mind look for that the eye object, ear object, nose, ob nose object, tongue object, body object, and the mind object. Anymore, you not look for outside. Why? Because 
now you experience something deeply higher than that outside pleasure and the joy so and that is this this joy this pleasure is more secure and it's more comfortable for you why because nothing wrong with the outside pleasure looking something but always you have to go and it is very limited and according to time space and even maybe you have to pay money to see it you know even watch a movie you have to go and you know, even you go to botanical garden or so you have to take a ticket then you feel and you feel joy and then you have to spend some money to eat something and maybe you cannot go alone so then you have to have a company and then you maybe you you know they having you know drama on the way you know and the uh, many attitude and you know you have to deal with this everything and you have the desire to find the satisfaction but you make a picnic and end the you end the picnic with the mess but this journey is not like that this journey become more comfortable and secure and it's 100% work to yourself and you know but with, when you go with other people sometimes maybe the place can be close because of something you no know, and and you don't know exactly that you can enjoy the place maybe so it's always depending from many situations but deeper this satisfaction not like that even the hearing the same you may be like to hear the song or hear something or somebody's voice but it all is depending from outside sources which you have no authority or you have no power to maintain so then you always have to depend on it and the the nose that the uh, aroma and how much money people have to pay for you know that it always a struggle sometimes and even 24/7 you cannot experience it sometimes and when it disappear you feel sad and eating you know whole life people are struggling eating it in looking for satisfaction you see it is kind of like a war even ask from your you know wife or the you know mother cooking is kind of like a war you know if you cook you know it you know it's uh, it's not easy see it it's look you look for the joy but it's a kind of like a war that you have to go through but this is not like that even after you you know eat like that way you sometimes people not happy about it and people say something else you know when you, while, while they eating they think oh if we have that it is good see you know i say averagely you know to make a meal you you have to spend 8 hours that's mean you have to think about what you going to cook and then you have to go and you know do the shopping and then you have to bring it and clean it so like that it's 8 hours but after that all sometimes while they eating they think oh we should go there and eat that see the people do that and the bodily sensation and the, when it come to the marriage you know and the we deeply bound to this you know the sensual desires look how many dramas when it come to other people people get married looking for satisfaction happiness but most of the marriages end with unhappiness worry sadness fear so you cannot guarantee will of course there is a, you know there is a satisfaction but you have to understand you cannot guarantee when it come through another person some people you know i i know personally some people they was happy only in their wedding day that's it after that the life became a hell is is nothing wrong but you have to understand that is the truth 
but deeper this this satisfaction is not like that even you know whatever the situation in your life of course there are a good husband wife there are good partners you know they they are a good life for some people good luck you know you have to really appreciate it you, know, you are so lucky if you have that but at the same time remember how you know it going to be forever how you know it going to end in which way but developing this satisfaction it's not like it's totally different totally different even it is not just the men, just the mental condition you go beyond that because the mental condition what we learn we we become happy with the when we pass the exams or study well and look as parents you know your children when they are in the you know the preschool they have done very good and then they they, they go to you know the school college you know university they have done very good but totally averagely when it come to life you know they they are they have no wisdom regarding life but they study completely different when it come to apply so then what we learn even as a, you know the knowledge sometimes it not going to bring us the total satisfaction look at the world educated people they have the degrees they have diplomas you know from different different universities look how they behave and what kind of things they 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 done to the world so then how you can guarantee oh you achieve to this level and then you can be completely happy and satisfied of course there is a social value and the satisfaction but it not going to be forever and it not going to be so sure to it going to be there forever even you have the money and the wealth and the power and look what is happening around nowadays you know when it come to that uh, the e election and after the election and the situation see the how you have to learn it so how about then if you if you are the the president how are you going to do this so that's mean even you achieve to the highest level that that place you you cannot guarantee if there is a happiness satisfaction but it completely totally 100% different when you come to tranquility state or the samadhi so that's why you need whoever it doesn't matter whoever look this outside world that everybody need the, the samadhi so that is very important why because this outside situation is going to change so then yourself remember whatever the position you have it is okay you have the satisfaction you know you go through sensual pleasures it is okay but remember it not going to be there forever it always going to depend from others sometimes situation time decisions and but this tranquility meditation is not like that once you develop once you come to to the point of to stay unshakable undisturbed that is a winning that is the kind of like achieving through this human life when you don't have it it doesn't matter whoever you are you know you going you going to have the pain you going to have trouble you going to have difficulties you know so then remember yourself gaining tranquility state purified so once you have the purified mind so your body mind and the breathing become so comfortable and that comfort that joy is higher than the the this sensual pleasures that is why in the first level the first hindrance disappear so the kama chand it does be it not it not you controlling oh i'm not going to do it i'm not going no it not thing to do with that naturally it happening 
is, is naturally itself when the when the wisdom arises there is no ignorance so then you no need to think oh i not going to do this i not going to do this. it's not there is no resistance inside you become more relaxed comfortable why because you have something higher now you don't don't look for the lower thing and when you go with that again and again now that tranquility state becomes so so strong and then what will happen as a result of that you are not going to resist anything and now now you detach from this outside sensual places now you settle down with deeper inside and once you get out of the sensual places from depending from outside world what will happen that mean you are not depending anymore pro, through the perce perception what will happen there is no anger vyapada the second hindrance disappear there is no anger no reason to get angry why because you are not depending from the deeper outside world and now you go again and again again and again again and again deeper with that satisfaction this is samadhi now you are in the tranquility state go step by so the first step you cut down all the sensual pleasures and now you become more energized and stronger to be in the samadhi and the second level you cut down the that's mean you you get out of detach from the anger the you become more stronger and what will happen just imagine as ordinary people when we go with our eye ear nose tongue body mind look for sensual pleasures satisfaction that is where we get tired so after watching two hour movie mostly what you what what happen to you so you have done you go to drama movie you know you enjoy so what happen you know you go picnic after you you driving so far or you traveling to another country and seeing some place you go to musical so mostly at night and when you come back what happened to you you feel so so strong and you feel so uh happy joy no most of people go and sleep you get tired and even you marriage people and you go for with the sensual pleasures as a husband wife you get tired about the the life and raising children and you get tired in a certain level it it take all your energy and you get, you don't get anything back so you have this very clearly you have to understand this process even think thinking about the situations and the problems even you know what happen after that you get tired so then now you don't have it why because you not depending from you are not spending so much energy with the the i ear no stung body mind to maintain from outside world so that doesn't mean you are not not in the world you are in the world but you totally become different person you you go with this you you just have a ordinary life but you you deeply become more conscious and so once you get out of the the sensual pleasure now you get out of the anger and see the when you are get angry how much you get tired your entire nerve system sometimes break down because of the anger and as you know it destroy your immune system and that's why most of people get the cancer because of deeply we smile 
we 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 have you know we just try to show we have we owe everything okay but deeper sometimes how we know there are anger so it ignite that all the unnecessary disease inside us and uh, the different ways also we we can get the disease but this is one way so when you get angry you don't feel energized like demons because demons when they get angry they that's a, that is the feeding for them it's a food for them but for us it's not like that once we get angry we feel tired we feel drained you know all the energy disappeared we, that the creative nature destroy you become so dumb after you get mad angry so but now look once you achieve to the samadhi you get out of the five the, the first hindrance and the second hindrance now you don't get angry see what happened then you have so much energy and head to toes your whole body work as one your whole nerve system activate and your immunity become stronger and and that deeper satisfaction keep you bound to your inner nature so the naturally you are start to energize so that your vitality will start to become activate and you become stronger deeper and that is where your laziness disappear see when it come to the third level of the the hindrance disappearing that's how you become more more clear and that clarity make you not weak not sleepy not tired no you become more sharp clear so once now you you are not get tired you are not sleepy and you you not kind of like a half sleepy half awake and then the accuracy clarity become sharp and the 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 fourth one the uddacha kukkucha restlessness so the restlessness means you know that what you have done in the past what going to happen in the future so with the self centered mind mind always go here and there but now it doesn't happen that way why because you are so accurate and clear so then you get out of the fourth one and now you see from beginning to the fourth one how this work and you start to feel the thrust and then you know buddha said right because it worked in me or oh, the, the in the dhamma in the tripitaka it says right and then you have no doubt about it oh this monk told that is right it work then you not have doubt about the monk so that is then the, in the first level you get the you have no doubt regarding the buddha dhamma and the sangha then you have the trust conviction the faith and also regarding the path that what you practice why because now you gain the result so now you got out of the five hindrances and at the same time what is happening the absorption the dhyana the high mental powers develop in you so first you achieve to the the samadhi and one by one by one when the five hindrances disappear the the high mental powers or the absorption start to arise and once the absorption arise once the mind a, a capable to to keep that clarity and get out of the five hindrances mind come to a point to see this inner mechanism form feeling sensation formations and recognitions once you come to that in that level especially that uh, that is where the vipassana arise and then in that knowledge that you can see how these things happen how things are arising and disappearing and uh, how things go with the flow 
this all you can start to recognize through this so this is the process it is not a magic it is just a natural process it is in you you know where the your nibbana now you know where this process in the tip of your nose catch it what is that sensation where the buddha's path arise tip of your nose through this sensation if you able to get that sensation and go with it you will attain to nibbana but see it is tip of our nose but we we look far away through the stars or with others go here and there so the meditation is the method that you slowly come to this and you start to go with that sensation and when you go what happen when it come to the vipassana how you attain to the nibbana so what is the nibbana means so even you attain to the the fourth absorption or the high mental power that doesn't mean the becoming not going to be there the becoming is still happen so how then the becoming start to get out becoming start to get out when you start to release the mental formations which we call sanskar fruits seeds for what for the greed hatred and the delusion so even you attain to the the high mental powers still there is a possibility that you can have the greed hatred and the delusion still there is a possibility you can come back so that is the danger with it so that that is how we become unpurified impurified so in the vipassana what is happening you start to recognize the the impermanent unsatisfactory nature and selflessness once you able to see that and little by little little by little you able to get into this sanskar sanskar means deeper this thought pattern of the mental formations and even once it come as idea or thought or emotions or pattern or habit you are not going to bound to that action why because you know things going to change and you are not going to take anything as self centered mind so somehow there are four kind of methods and the characters with the mental formations so when it come to mental formation there are two kind of mental formations profitable unprofitable so profitable mental formations mean loving kindness generosity wisdom so those are that three things profitable mental formations unprofitable mental formations greed hatred and the delusion so there are four kind of people when it come to this some pe- that all these four kind of people have the from the birth they have this three profitable skills and unprofitable skills but the thing is this in their in their life in their in in the in day to day life what is happening mostly because of the people around them or the friends or the their lifestyle environment so some people have more more strong profitable skills but what is happening as a result of their lifestyle it is start to become weak their profitable skill that mean from the sansara they have ability to develop the loving kindness compassion generosity and the wisdom but in in according to their lifestyle what is happening may mostly when the other people start to come to their life they lose their ability to perform the loving kindness 
generosity and the wisdom see sometimes children as children they are so generous but when they become young they become greedy see that it start to go to other side and some people born with the the profitable skill and in profitable skill and according to their lifestyle so the profitable skill they are but they cannot develop it but what happening they start to increase the unprofitable unprofitable skills they fail to develop the profitable skills and there are some people come to world and with the profitable skill and unprofitable skills and what is happening as a result of their lifestyle they able to to develop the profitable skills and not allow that uh, to to upcome the uh, their unprofitable skill as example they develop their generosity they become more and more uh, wise and they become more and more generous they become more and more loving kind and some people what is happening they able to develop it to higher and completely eradicate that all unprofitable skills some people develop it without eradicating it going to be there and uh, that uh, unprofitable skills so some people able to destroy that also so then you have to be the person develop this that profitable skill and at the same time take out all the unprofitable skills so that is what through the tranquility meditation we does so then be very careful in day to day life you have choice you have a choice to ignite your profitable skills and at the same time ignite your unprofitable skills that is mean profitable skills mean loving kindness compassion or the generosity and the wisdom unprofitable skills mean greed hatred and the the ignorance so then when it come to your life be very careful knowingly or unknowingly sometimes we do this and it's kind of like a hide somewhere it has power to ignite through the actions in day to day life so when it come to recognize the five aggregates form feeling sensation formation that the formation means the sanskara and the recognition so when it come to see the formation that is where you see and whatever unprofitable skills and you able to destroy it there there is no any other way and uh, at the same time you can develop the profitable skills see through even you attain to the dhyana or the high mental powers there is no way you can destroy the this unprofitable skills somewhere it going to hide that's mean it like this you attain to dhyana still there is a possibility you can kill somebody somehow in 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 the sansaric journey there is no guarantee you not going to do it even sometimes you can kill your mother father your husband wife children like that it can happen but your meditation so good you attain to the the high mental powers but in day to day life as ordinary person it can happen and it even you can steal something there is a possibility and there is a possibility sexually you can you know misconduct it it can happen 
and even if there is a possibility you you tell lies or you know verbally you can abuse others and there is a possibility you know you can you get into intoxicate your body why because there's unprofitable you know seeds there somewhere but when it come to vipassana through five aggregates once you see the sanskara you uproot it how knowingly impermanent unsatisfactory nature and selflessness and once you uproot once you recognize that the the this all deeper and when the thoughts arise or when the feelings arise when the sensation arise when you recognize that impermanent and you not bound to it once you not bound to it the sanskara become powerless once the sanskara become powerless it de deactivate that is where you can destroy it once you destroy that there is no way you going to to go in profitable way unprofitable way there is no way that doesn't mean you develop profitable ways no you become neutral you develop the equanimity that uh, you don't you don't go look looking for that profitable or you not depending from unprofitable no you come to a point because once you know once you achieve to something what tells you how to know there is nothing to know you know it so that's how even you complete the wisdom also so this is how the the journey work and you don't see that what is beyond but when it come to recognize the very nature of the five aggregates that is where you recognizing the very nature of the world that is what the buddha is teaching are the most things literature it covered by the literature stories you know many many things but the deeper the essence of the buddha's teaching get into five aggregates and recognize impermanent unsatisfactory nature and selflessness when you able to get into that even not the high mental powers or the dhyana because even there was even the, the samadhi it was before the buddha there are many other ways to get but after that once you achieve it you need that once you achieve it getting to five aggregates and impermanent unsatisfactory nature and selflessness seeing this understanding this is the path of the the nibbana so this is the the summary and uh, again and again listen to this and be very clear and if there is a question don't go with the question so you can you can ask it and uh, so be very clear that clarity will help you when you sit it going to help for you once you know the path very clearly even today you are not going to practice it but once you know it that is the highest and that is the 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 best that you can know in this life there is nothing else that compare to this path the one you know that keep it with you and you go with this life maybe maybe some other lives you go in the sansara but you keep this with you resonate hold it to that harbor your deeper thought to that wherever you go it's like when the seeds is well preserved once it come to the right soil when the the water is there when the necessary heat is there what will happen it is start to grow same thing going to happen to you so again and again learn this path and remember there is nothing else to learn there is nothing else learn this path be very clear with it and keep it with you and wherever you go whatever you do when the right time come when the right season is there 
the nibbana seed going to to arise in within you that will help you to have your transformation so with this i bless upon everyone with this good practice may all of you be well happy and peaceful may no harm come to you may no difficulties come to you may no problems come to you may you also have the patience courage understanding and determination to meet and overcome inevitable difficulties in your life during this time period may everyone stay healthy and safe and finally may all of you attain supreme bliss of nibbana sabbhityo vajjantu sabbaro go vinasatu mate bhavattantarayo suti digayiko bhava ಸಂಪತ್ತಿಸಿದ್ದಿಯಾಪಮಂತು bless you